Hey guys, we're doing something cool again. Jade and I are teaming up to do a review for Supernatural Season 15, Episode 8, which was the mid-season finale, which I didn't realize until a bunch of people told me afterwards. And uh, we're going to be talking about <laughs> the episode, how the season's been so far, as well as what might come next. So, Jade, I guess we'll start off with our first question. Like, what are your thoughts on this season so far, both good and bad? Well, so far, I actually really like this season and where we stand now after episode 8. I think my only complaint would be that we're halfway through the season and the boys have only interacted with Chuck, like, once through Donatello. But, like, I understand that fighting gods, like, a really big thing, but I wish we got a little more action in regards to that. But... Besides that, I, I like the dynamic of the season and how it's not just Sam and Dean, you know, because when I heard that Supernatural was ending, I thought that the last season was going to be, like, mm -hmm. hyper-focused on them, but, you know, now it's not, so that's that's good. <laughs> the season's been more focused on finding a way to get, well, fight, fighting a way to fight against God. And I like the plot of the season so far and what they've done with it. And I've personally enjoyed every episode okay. that I've watched. Um, I've been so. on like kind of a back and forth. Um, the first episode was meh. The second one was just, just really bad. But I found out why I was <laughs> right about say, that feeling that the first three episodes were rushed. I found out why. Uh, mm -hmm. So supposedly... The entire town of Ladner, like the, the big street where they shot down as well as the residential neighborhood, they didn't properly vet that neighborhood. Yeah. They were supposed to send out people Ooh. with flyers and and questionnaires of asking, hey, are you guys okay with us shutting down this entire area so we can shoot here? But supposedly, the uh, locations team on that totally screwed the pooch and they did not do that properly and they pissed off Ladner. Mm -hmm. Like, Lad Ladner doesn't, like, I, I don't know if Ladner's <laughs> got a filming ban right now, but Supernatural burnt a lot of bridges there, and that's why the first three yeah. episodes felt so rushed, which makes so much sense now. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I mean, retrospective to, like, the whole, what we have now, I think the first three episodes are kind of, like, Oh, yeah, after the first three, it started to get a little bit better. Um... Especially when Ketch died. Ah. I was... When, when oh he God, yeah. walked past <laughs> them in the second episode, like, clearly he's outside of the barrier, and then he walks in front of them, he's like, yeah, I'm possessed. It's like, wait, what? He just... He just broke the clear logic of this episode. I I liked how... Um, I, I have been... Yeah. Uh, about some of the fan service returns, but I've been okay with some of them. Like, for instance, I enjoyed Amara's very short... Re, uh, return, even though it kind of demitigated the whole idea of these two cosmic entities by kind of coming together and like putting differences aside now they're just kind of like the bitter brother and sister, which I was a little bit upset about, but then um, Rowena's return was really good and I what they did with her character especially mm -hmm. in the, uh, the mid-season finale, I thought that was really well done some of the episodes have been cool. I really like Aline. I like that Aline came back. That's my favorite episode so far is her coming back. Cause it was That's a, actually it was, my favorite episode Yeah, it was too. an uh, actual Golden grounded Time. episode. It was yeah. well written. It didn't have crap strewn all over it, which was interesting because I think if I'm correct, the episode next, like the seventh episode, is the worst episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the one where it's just, it's just a giant fan service to to Jensen's singing and his beer. Like, that episode is completely pointless. <laughs> it literally has no point to this entire season. I, I, I would have to... I gotta rewatch that episode um, because it's, I can't exactly remember everything that happened, but I do remember Dean singing. Nothing! He was Sam asleep! Was doing then. Um, well, remember nothing. Russian dude comes was? and is like, Hey! Oh, yeah. Okay, and, and, yeah, no, I remember. And Sam okay. found yeah. out I mean, what we already know. Like, nothing was newly gained. Yeah, we already knew that that God was weak. So, yeah, no, I agree with you. Last call, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like seeing Jensen sing, and that was fun. But it just didn't really no, it, make sense. Because, like, <laughs> before in the show, Dean has been, like, awful at yeah. singing. So, like... 
Oh yeah, because I, I just watched the. Um, you know? I watched No Exit from season two, and that's where he's singing Ario Speedwagon in the car, and it's kind of it's, it's funny, um, just to see him go from there. I did uh -huh. think that speaking of Jensen though, he did direct his best episode, though, which was the fourth one, the one with Becky. Talk about taking oh, a character that, was, that yeah. no, I agree, that hated, was really just good. hated, and putting her in like one of the more important episodes of the season i thought that was pretty good they did a good job with mm -hmm. uh how they bought back becky because like i've always been on the sense of where like i like having characters come back that we've lost as long as it has something to do with the plot or as long as there's something that is gonna come from them being there and like with becky i just i like the way how they bought her back in order to kind of like have chuck have his yeah. little like writing spur if that, you know so and it's good to see that becky isn't like no she she moved on job right <laughs> anymore. Um, and then so we, we kind of talked yeah. about it actually we talked about both of them but we both said that our favorite episode is aline coming back and like why did you like that uh like what were the aspects of that episode that you enjoyed i really liked that episode because we were able to mm -hmm. see yeah. Cass hunt on his own while we got to see sam go into rowena's apartment and all that stuff and i always tend to like sam centric episodes more because it's <laughs> sam <laughs> but i liked having eileen come back because if anyone oh, deserves yeah. a win like that it's definitely sam and i liked seeing sam mm -hmm. use what he learned from rowena yeah too that was that was really cool and i liked seeing them just um I liked that they dedicated, like, a whole episode to having Sam do this after Rowena's death yeah. because it felt necessary. On top of having Eileen back, it just made it more necessary for him to go yeah. back to her apartment. So oh. it, that's it had why cool I like elements. It. I like the but, idea yeah. that Rowena had, like, the hex that she had on that house. I enjoyed, yeah, Castiel's part. I keep forgetting that. I, I always find it interesting that Castiel can always do better on his own than he can with the brothers. It seems he just kind of gets downgraded when he's with them. He kind of goes stupid. But when he's by himself, he's pretty darn good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Eileen just got so unceremoniously killed off in season 12 that I actually don't mind her return into this one. Um, and their chemistry is really I good. The, the chemistry between them is very good. Um, the only part I didn't like was just the witches. Because there's that fight scene that's just so bad. It just... Because Dean shoots one. Like, the body falls. They all look at Dean. And Dean's like, yeah, I'm just waiting for you to take my gun. Um, but yeah, I, I like that one. Um, now, talking about our worst episode, I I said that the, the singing one is just totally pointless. It's even worse than the complete kind of garbage fire that I felt was the second episode of the season. What do you feel is like the weakest episode of the season so far? Well, if I had to rate them, I put episode two as oh, the worst. So because, bad. Yeah. <laughs> like... I personally, like, I enjoyed the episode, if you exclude Rowena and Ketch being all gross and heteronormative, mm -hmm. but I, I do believe, like, the premise of the first three episodes could have do been done better, and considering we only have 20 episodes this season, I feel like the main idea of those three episodes could have been condensed into two. Well, if not, if it could have been, sense. like, drawn out. I thought this was supposed to be well, the that entire... Too, yeah. I thought this was the whole threat throughout the entire season and then they solve it by the third episode it's like oh that's dab solving his problems <laughs> <Sorry. coughs> let me just die behind camera nice. real quick <laughs> i mean yeah i agree that it could have been drawn out longer and it could have been a lot more interesting too but considering they put it into three episodes i feel like they could have like I'm trying to think like because you had, you had God breaking open hell, mm -hmm. which was, like, the main thing of the first three episodes, right? But that's not, like, the main thing of the whole season, you know? Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I mean, I can agree to disagree with that, if that makes sense. Because I, I'm kind of in the middle about it, so I'm rambling. <laughs> well, uh, uh, it's, it was a threat. It's, like, how they solve it technically isn't bad like they do a good job with it it's not mm -hmm. good as a is a generous word they do a job with it um but i just felt that that this was supposed to be kind of the rising threat but then this happens and then they're fine and they kind of have like monster of the week episodes in between it's like hey guys this is your last season you kind of need to build to this mm -hmm. and just gonna kind of jump to jump a question here 
it's like you said, like, Chuck has not been in this as much as you would think. Um, yeah. uh, to make a reference, uh, Amara in season 11, she was prevalent. She wasn't in every episode, but she kept coming back here and there. Now, admittedly, we are getting a condensed season, and Chuck has been in what? One, two, oh, he was in one, four, and eight. eight. So he's been yeah. in three episodes. Which is, you know, I, I guess a similar-ish. Maybe maybe one more episode of him, just, but... I'm not... I, I've gotten over my absolute rage of the choice to making him the villain of this season. I am just... I'm, I'm past it now. I, I'm, I'm still pissed about it, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to take it as it is and see what they do with it. It hasn't been the complete and utter dumpster fire when, with that mentality. Um... It could be a little bit more honed, especially after episode four. I really liked episode four, um, what they did with him. And someone made that comment, too, that Sam has been seeing all the times that they could have died in previous seasons. Like, all the times they could have with failed. Like, with Dean and the Mark, or Sam being addicted to demon blood. I, I liked that. I thought that so when someone mentioned that to me, he's like, oh, that's actually kind of cool to, to see, like, maybe this whole idea that they haven't been on a path, that they have had free will this whole time, and not this stupid boop poop that God's been behind everything. Like, they still have, they're still team free will. That's my hope. We can hope, but <laughs> I, I do agree with you on the fact that they chose Chuck to be the big bad at the end of season 14 was kind of like, what? Let's cram you know? it in the last fit 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, if they were going to do that, they should have at least built up to it and not just be like, hey, here's Chuck fucking up the universe. Yeah, exactly. You know? But <laughs> Like, I know they did that with season 11 with Amara. Like, hey, yeah, if you kill me, the darkness appears. Wait, what? But they, they recovered with season 11. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm... I'm still kind of on the fence about it, but I'm not like a rage field machine anymore about it, really. <laughs> no, I get that. <laughs> um, but, I mean, Chuck is just a mess. I mean, <laughs> man was sitting at the casino playing slots, so I, I, he's not really doing much right now. Oh, yeah. But next, yeah, next episode, he's like kidnapping Sam, which... I don't understand why you're God. You could have just like snapped your fingers yeah, and exactly. made him come. Like, okay, that works. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, speak. Um, well, actually, speaking of snapping fingers, that brings me to Michael, who I actually thought that they would totally screw up his return. I thought that this was just going to be a giant fan servicey thing, but I actually like how they did the two, like him talking to himself, essentially. I agree. I yeah. think that that was actually the biggest surprise of for me of this season. Not that he came back. I had a feeling he would. It's that they didn't screw it up. Yeah. Well, they had already spoiled that Michael and Adam were coming back this season. But I loved the way that they bought Michael back, and I couldn't have asked for them to do it any other way, honestly. Yeah, the conversation Cause... with himself at the diner, right? <laughs> No, yeah, I, I liked how they showed Adam being possessed by Michael and showing them just coexist in mm -hmm. one body. Because a lot of the times we don't really get to see that. Uh, it, most of the time when someone's possessed by like an archangel to talk to them, we usually get like the whole mirror thing, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, from like season five, yeah. Yeah, or like uh, with Michael and Dean in uh, season 14. Yeah, 14. I'm not going to yeah. remember that because that was so bad. <laughs> I, I did like how they even talked about that a little bit um, mm -hmm. and then Castiel gave him all the memories of everything that's happened that was my favorite scene of that episode yeah that I, was. I think Jake Abel's facial expressions alone just like sold me like he had me feeling like really bad for Michael oh yeah no so. it was it was really well done I, I think that every part with this character's return was well done except for one tiny tiny little thing that happened right at the end the cuffs yeah he's got the cuffs on yet he can open up a portal to purgatory so i actually back in season 13 lucifer wore those same cuffs yeah and he was able to smite angels while wearing the cuffs 
So what is either the, so what <laughs> what is the power of the cuffs then? I have absolutely no clue because like I don't know if it just means those cuffs suck, but I would raise more of the question like back at season six, Raphael and Crowley wanted to open up the door to purgatory, and it took them a lot more effort than just snapping their fingers. Yeah, exactly, so, right? Oh, that this... that's what irked me more than the cuffs. Oh, you know? just like the, the <laughs> easiness of it. Well, yeah, like how did didn't Dean? He went back to Purgatory at one point in season seven or eight. No, it was seven. Actually, Sam went to Purgatory oh. back in season eight, episode 19. How did he get there? A Reaper. Uh, it was the episode Taxi Driver. In order to complete the second trial, Sam has to get Bobby out of hell. So he goes through Purgatory. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I, I do not remember that. Oh yeah, I'm all. I'm a season eight geek, so. Oh yeah, you just said, <laughs> and I guess so we can just talk about now the the mid season finale. What what did you think of it? I I actually was, I didn't know it was a mid season finale. I I, because, <laughs> all like the Supernatural's Facebook page was like, ah, tonight's episode, tonight's episode. It's like, okay, is it is it the mid season finale? And then the next day they said, oh yeah, here's a clip from the from the mid season finale. It's like, oh buds, what? I didn't know. I, I, I thought you guys had at least one more week. It's not even Christmas yet. I thought you would have. Yeah. I, I thought it was going to be episode nine that was the break, because I can't remember the last season's uh, mid-season finale number. So, but I was a little bit, I was a little bit like, oh crap, Oop, I feel like an idiot now. But that's okay. <laughs> I, I did enjoy it. I think it. It's the only negative I have really in terms of story element was that random friend of Eileen. Who, mm -hmm. if I'm correct, is a character who's never been in the show before. Yeah, no, I've never seen her. No. At least from no. what I can remember. Yeah, and and all of a sudden she was like, "Hey, Eileen, I found you on After on, being on Skype. Dead for three years. Ah, I got your <laughs> cell phone too. It's like, what, what, what? How does this woman have a cell phone? Oh wait, she texts. Okay, yeah, she can text. But still, it was just so out of left field. That I was like, this is obviously something bad. I didn't think it was oh, going yeah, to be no, Chuck, definitely. but. I, I just hope Eileen doesn't die again. Oh yeah, no, that if they kill her off again, like the point of bringing her back it would just be so pointless, you know? Cause I, I, that's one thing I hate is when they bring a character back and then kill them off like immediately, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like with Gabriel, I would make that example. Uh huh. I liked this episode a lot, mm -hmm. um, especially everything with Adam and Michael and seeing Rowena as the queen of hell because honestly she that was, was funny. born to, she was like born to die to become the queen of hell. Yeah. It was so great. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I did enjoy that. <laughs> so did I. Um, I think this episode left us off with a lot of unanswered questions like what's going to happen to yeah. Sam and Eileen and Good. Dean and Cass are going to come back are they going to come back to purgatory in time and does the spell that michael even gave them work i i just i think this episode finally gave sam and dean somewhere to go regarding defeating chuck because they haven't really had much to work something towards the, with. the overall narrative yeah 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 no I, um, I agree with you on that but i do agree with you with that i think the girl's name was Susie, i believe i how oh i'm just gonna call this dead girl it's been dead for three years yeah. Like that's totally not fishy. Yeah, like all right. It, it was it was really weak. Like if they wanted to have any sort of connection, they like, could have used the woman like she Eileen worked at a hotel, right? That's how they introduced her in season 11. I found correct. She worked at a hotel. I believe that so. That was haunted. Yeah. Like you could have just brought the hotel manager back. Again, completely out of left field for a reference, but at least there's some sort of you know not a, a, a not a completely obvious ploy yeah um maybe the actress wasn't available maybe um or the actor whoever was the person who ran the hotel um yeah but yeah i i enjoyed the majority of the episode i like how they built up um towards the overall narrative i liked michael's return and i like the character I, i'm kind of still on the fence of whether he actually helped them or not i'm also kind of curious if he'll come back or not um, the Chuck thing is still a little weak, but they are going towards a means of defeating Chuck or doing something because they can't kill him, right? That's been clearly stated 
over and over again. I like how they also got rid of the, the equalizer gun because Dad realized, he's like, ah, oh, crap, this is like a MacGuffin tool. I can't use this. <laughs> Quick, destroy it. I, that was, yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, the part that I hate. Oh, sorry, sorry, not the part that I hate. But the part that I am very upset about is the fact that Lilith came back and no idea where she came from. But apparently, if someone said the, the empty, yet even the empty said, God has no power here. He can't bring anyone back from here. And yet Lilith came back. I would argue how much power... But he's, well, even, I mean... but he's even injured, right? He even talked to Amara. He's like, I can't do as much. It's like, how is he able to do something that has been stated that he can't do while wounded? Well, we've seen him bring Castiel back before from the empty, which I would say is a giant plot hole if you don't just, like, how is God able to do this Yeah. God doesn't have power in the empty? Yeah, I know. I'm still waiting um, for the empty to come back, too. That... Yeah, same. I have a whole theory on how, like, god can like die without like destroying the universe but it could save that for later <laughs> oh no i'm very interested but, oh that'd be interesting to see the idea that lilith is back kind of it it takes a bit of a doo-doo on my favorite season being season three because mm -hmm. it's like ah, i i hated this character like i i hated the villain like she was a good villain to hate and the fact that they just kind of willy-nilly brought her back it's like no no, yeah, you don't do I that. Agree. No. <laughs> I think there's certain characters that you sh shouldn't bring back. And I think Lilith, I, I'm kind of in the middle because I liked seeing her being like played by a different character and seeing what she would be like, you know, seeing Sam and Dean now. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like she's been dead since season four. The only reason she died was to release Lucifer from the cage. So, like... Her purpose was, What's yeah, like, I, I... Just to destroy the gun. Like, God could have just fucking done that himself. Exactly. You know? That's kind of my reason as to why her, her revival is probably the... Like, I thought Kevin Tran's return was kind of the... Uh, but the Lilith one has so far been the most pointless revival because it just... There's no point to bring her character back. Her character's arc was 100% done in season four. Mm -hmm. Like, her purpose fulfilled. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Like, at least with Kevin, like, it made some sense because he, you know, God lied to them and sent him to hell instead, yeah. and now he's out. That makes sense. You, you, That's you, actually something we can roll with. Just Lilith being popped out of the empty just, yeah. like, kind of makes no well, sense. Well, you know, if you wanted to bring anyone back, well, what's his name? Um, He was the other angel that was with Castiel in season four. Azazel? think he was no azazel was the demon that killed oh. mary are you talking about there's a f uriel uriel yeah he was uh i actually just finished the watchman the first season and he's in the last episode i was yeah. like holy shit it's him like you, you <laughs> could have brought him back he was a radical angel like that would have been more of a like a, a more realistic revival of a character if anything but mm -hmm. so now that we're uh we're, we're so now we're 12 nine ten so like 11 episodes left well, what do how do you what is your theory so far if you have one of how this will end so i have a lot of theories that are kind of like all over the place but one that i'm going to talk about in my new video for this episode is jack taking over god's role so oh. um if so sam and dean and Cast now have this spell that can trap God, right? Mm -hmm. Previously, we see that Amara was trapped, and then she escaped, and then she wreaked havoc on the world, right? I don't think Supernatural can really end with them trapping God, because there's always going to be that possibility that he can escape, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they so, replace him. I, yeah, so I think that somehow, some way, maybe with the help of Amara they'll be able to kill they'll be able to kill god and because of that the universe needs that balance right as explained in season 11 so the only other person who i could think that would be able to fill the shoes of god would be jack considering he is way more powerful than all the other archangels you know because mm -hmm. 
Michael even didn't even know that there was other universes, and Jack came out of the womb knowing about, like, all of them, so. Yeah, no, yeah. That's actually, that's one of the better ones I've heard. Um, I'm kind of on the fence as to whether this will actually, and whether it will be under good or bad, but with that idea, that does actually sound like a solid idea. Mm -hmm. I'm kind I of have, yeah. I mean, I, it makes sense to me because, like, why wouldn't Jack be back yet, you know? Because Billy... So we Billy got, we got plans for of, you. Yeah, yeah. So Billy was kind of in the same position as I would say Jack would be if God died, right? In season 11, Death died, and then she became the new Death. Mm -hmm. So if God was to die and Jack is still resting in the empty, they could just pop him out and boom, yeah. Jack's God. You know? Yeah, no, that's just, that's true. I, I guess I guess we'll see. But yeah, no, honestly, that's the best thought I've heard so far. That's Yeah. But because... I might get a chance, I, I don't know, I might get a chance to work on the next, like, one episode, or sorry, one day on the next, uh, in, ne in, in the next year, because I, I found, uh, I got a number for one of the guys who's the hire, so I might try and work one day, just to see, but, wow. like, I honestly, I don't know what they're gonna do, but, mm -hmm. eh, that's the better thought, I, I'm just kind of... I just want to see how it ends. Like, I just don't want it to end badly. I guess that's my yeah, main thing. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> I don't want Supernatural to end badly. Because, I mean, I would probably be okay regardless of whether they live or die. Or, But I just wanted to have a solid ending that mm -hmm. I'm not going to, like, be screaming at my computer for after I yeah. watch it, you know? Because I, I, I'll i be okay if they die. I just want something that's satisfying. Mm -hmm. A good conclusion. Yeah. All right. I'm interested to see if Eric Kripke actually comes back in a writer's perspective. Like I, I would love that. Mm -hmm. I, or Ben. I, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, guys, that's been our uh, that's been Jade and I's review of episode eight. Our thoughts on the season so far and what's going to come. Um, some really cool points came up. Uh, Jade, thank you again for doing this. This is really really fun. Um, looking forward to your episode reviews and then also just seeing what continues on like especially if you do your theory reviews or videos mm -hmm. I would be very interested in those no yeah definitely I'll, I'll, I'll have a video up probably at the same time this posts for this episode Ooh. so I talk a little more about the Jack theory oh that's so. cool I'd definitely be interested in hearing that all right guys that's all from us I hope you enjoyed the video and I uh, guess we'll see you guys next year well well, we're reviewing the episodes next year. You won't see us physically next year, but you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.